We're live. Um, glad to have you all here. Um, this is Cloud Native Live, where we dive into the code behind Cloud Native. Um, so very happy to have you all here. I'm Annie Telesto, and I'm the CNCF ambassador, as well as a senior product marketing manager at Samunda, and I'll be your host tonight. So every week we bring a new set of presenters to showcase how to work with Cloud Native technologies. They will build things, they will break things, and they will answer all of your burning questions. So join us every Wednesday to watch live as you have done now, or you're watching this on demand, very much welcome. So this week we have Jason Morgan here with us to talk about Service Mesh 101, an introduction with Linkerd. Very exciting topic. Um, and as always, this is an official live stream of the CNCF, and as such, it is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. So please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all of your fellow participants as well as presenters. Um, we will be taking questions throughout the whole session. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything, just send them to the chat and we will get to them. Um, hi, hi to Ahmed from Egypt, for example. Thank you for letting us know you're watching and engaging. Perfect. But with that, I'll hand it over to Jason and we will get started. All right. Uh... Hey folks, how's it going? Uh, so my name's uh, Jason Morgan. I work for Buoyant, the company behind the Linkerd project. Linkerd is a graduated project from the CNCF, and we're a service mesh. Uh, just a quick question to you: Is is Abu Bakr going to join also? Or I think he's moderating the, oh, the question, like the Q and A. Um, to my understanding, if he wants to join, of course, happy to. <laughs> no, no problem. I just want to know if if anyone else was if I was supposed to be talking to anyone else. Well, so I just wanted to start off with a little bit of like, what is what is a service mesh? Uh, can you can I share my screen? Yes, I think yes, perfect. Now it's happening. All right. Uh, so I've got a little little whiteboard here, and I have an example application, and it's <clears throat> it's really living in a Kubernetes cluster. So imagine this whole box is a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so I've got I've got an application, and we're actually gonna. We're actually going to deploy an application that looks just like this in a little demo right afterwards. Where we've okay. got some kind of web front end and two back end services. And so this is this is your app on Kubernetes, right? Um, and I want to show you what what a service mesh is and how it interacts with the rest of an application. So the the long story short is a service mesh is a tool that shifts some responsibility from application developers onto platform operators, right? And it, it does it by installing a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of proxies in between your applications and those proxies manage network traffic. So they can handle things like service discovery, uh, adding observability, you know, doing things like request level load balancing, you know, a, a bunch of other things. MTLS, right? If you care about encrypting and mutually authenticating connections between environment. So the, the process of installing a service mesh is, is fairly simple, right? So first off, you're gonna you're gonna take your Kubernetes cluster and you're gonna import or install a control plane. So the control plane is the interface for uh, us platform operators and and our service mesh, right? So we install a control plane in our cluster and then we begin we begin adding applications to a mesh. And the way we do it is we install a little proxy. And we sit it, we sit it beside our application, and that proxy then handles all of its traffic uh, on the network, right? It is, it is your um, your proxy or your arbiter for things that happen, you know, in app to app communication. So the proxies will handle will handle setting up encryption. They'll handle, you know, giving you some insight into how your application works, as well as you know anything else that you you want that service mesh to do. Does this kind of make sense so far? Yeah, really good stuff. And if, if the audience, you have any questions or something doesn't make sense, please do let us know so we can actually take you through the explanations and everything. Yeah, awesome. So with that, we can hop into a quick demo and actually go from, go from the slides to real life. Sound good? Perfect. All right, so I'm going to a new screen. Can people see the, the writing? Is this, is this big enough? 
Um, I can see it quite okay. But maybe it could be a bit bigger, but I think it's it's probably fine. I have a I have it essentially taking my whole screen, and then it works at least. All right. Um, so let's start off, right? Let's let's see what is the process to install Linkerd. So right now I have a Kubernetes cluster. It's running locally, and it's got one app going, right? And that app is very similar to the one that we described. There's a web front end, there's two back ends, and then there's a traffic generation service. So let's just let's just get started. So first and foremost, I want to install Linkerd, right? So so to, to step back one more time, the, the goal with Linkerd is to make it as non-invasive as possible. We want you to have apps that run well in Kubernetes and then install Linkerd and have your, your app continue to run you know, the way it was running before. Uh, so if we if we go over here. KNS emoji Bodo. Right, I'm just gonna swap namespaces over here on the bottom left. If I go, you know, port forward um, service slash web. I think it's web dash service. Eighty eighty on eighty. And I go to my web browser and go. Localhost 80, and I can see I've got my I've got my application going. I can vote on things. I can check out my leaderboard, right? So I've got a I've got a web app. It's running in Kubernetes, um, and and right now it works. And we're gonna we're gonna install Linkerd Service Mesh. Then we're gonna add our application to the mesh, and everything is gonna continue to work, right? That's our that's our starting point with Linkerd. Um, so what I did there is I I pulled the I pulled a curl just to install the Linkerd binary on my laptop, right? Uh, it was actually already installed because I do this you know professionally, but uh, you get the you get the gist of it. And we're gonna go. Let's see, it's twelve oh nine Eastern. We're gonna have a fully installed uh, Linkerd instance by twelve fourteen. So we're we're gonna do zero to meshed in five minutes. Uh, after I install the binary, I just extend my path. Uh, we can go check our Linkerd version, right? So I'm running the latest stable, which is 2.11.1. There's a question, by the way, if there's a good time to take one. It's gonna mess up a bit of your timing and the goal. But <laughs> no, I think we're good. We'll we'll do we'll do questions and still hit our target. Oh, that's my bad. Well, that's even better. Um, so what is the difference between service mesh and networking in Kubernetes like Calico, WeaveNet, and other networking? Yeah. Absolutely wonderful question. Thank you so much. Um, so the the it's you know it's the TCP/IP stack, right? So the TCP/IP stack is you know, you've got these seven layers, right? Like physical, um, data, physical like data link, IP network. You know there, there's there's seven layers. I can't remember them all. It's been a while since I've done my 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 networking exam, but. Um, Essentially, you know, your 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 networking tools run down at, at layer three or layer four of the stack. And they worry about IP address to IP address, maybe like namespace to namespace, whatever that is. That's that's where they live. Service meshes live up at layer seven. So they're an application focused tool. So they take the network and just use it however it works. And they don't they don't concern themselves with the networking. They let network handle, you know, getting a packet from one place to another. They provide application level logic and control into your environment, right? So we'll, you'll see it a bit when we get into the demo, right? But they'll do things like inspect the traffic between your applications so you can see how the individual API calls are going, right? They'll do things like, you know, uh, change the load balancing from connection level, right? Which is, you know, I open a connection from one point to another point and everything everything sits there. and change it so that they they see each each request and then they'll balance those requests against all the available connections as opposed to just one. I hope that I hope that answers answers your question. And I'm sorry I don't know how to say your name. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so with that and and please feel free to to ask more if I didn't quite get it. Oh, awesome. Um, with that we're just going to test that our cluster works. So I'm actually running a K3D in memory cluster on Docker desktop on my on my Windows 11 box. So I've got a lot of weird stuff going on. So I just want to check that that this is going to work. And the Linkerd CLI gives me this handy pre-check flag. I can validate that things are going to be OK if I install, or at least that it thinks it'll be OK. Get a bunch of green check marks, which is awesome. And I feel confident to 
move forward. So with that, we're going to try type Linkerd install and see what happens. And I'm still, I've got two minutes, so we'll see if I hit my target. Um, so when I type Linkerd install, what I get is instead of anything actually changing on my cluster, so this is all the active pods on my cluster, instead I get a bunch of YAML, right? And this is this is the Kubernetes manifest that's going to install Linkerd. So I could I could put this in a Git repo, add it with a GitOps flow. You know, I could I could generate this YAML using the Linkerd CLI, or I could generate this YAML using Helm. And both the CLI and Helm in Linkerd use the exact same YAML templates. So an argument that you provide to the CLI will work on the on the Helm chart and vice versa. Uh, so you don't see a ton of uh, space between the Helm chart and the CLI. So to actually do the install and meet my target, because I've only got a minute left, I type Linkerd install and I pipe it over to kubectl apply. When that happens, I get you know three new uh, three new deployments being created. I have an identity service, a destination service, and one other that I don't remember. Um, So, oh right, in the proxy injector, right? So these are these are the three services that are actually going to be the core control plane. So going back to that to that graphic, uh, that's this control plane. That is a tool to to actually distribute our proxies, a tool to know where traffic should go, and a tool to give people their their valid identity or give our pods their valid identity so that they can talk to one another. And we're at twelve fourteen, and I've got my I've got my core control plane up and running. We'll run a Linkerd check just to validate that it's up. And status check screen and 12.14. So I feel like I feel like I'm there. So that's that's the core Linkerd install. But as of right now, we can take a look over at our Mojivoto app. And none of this is actually in the mesh. So the second half of what we do after we install that control plane is we actually have to add these, add these proxies in. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do that next. Uh, Actually, slightly lying here because what I'm really going to do now that I've got now that I've got the Linkerd control plane installed. As of Linkerd 2.10, we broke the control plane into a couple uh, different components. Uh, no, so Femi Femi Yusuf uh, asks asked if if pods are installed in every node on the cluster. The answer is not necessarily right. When you install Linkerd in production, you'll want to install it in HA mode, so you'll want at least three replicas of the common control plane components. Uh, but there's no like there's no daemon set with Linkerd that necessarily installs one per node. I hope that answers your question. Um, so now that I've installed the main control plane, I'm also, because I'm doing a demo, I'm going to want to install the Linkerd dashboard. That's like our cool uh, graphical interface, right? And allows us to do some neat stuff that I'm going to show off in just a minute. So I'm going to install Linkerd viz. And I'm going to, it, it will again, Generate uh, generate YAML templates, and we're going to hand it off to the Kubec the Kubernetes API to actually get the dashboard installed. Make sense? Hopefully. Uh, so the by default, right, the Linkerd Viz components are installed in a different namespace. I want to be clear: this this visualization component, this dashboard, is optional, right? It's handy, and I'd recommend it for a lot of use cases, but it's not it's not required. Um, now that I've got it, it, it installs a bunch of things, uh, from like our, we've got this tool called tap, which allows you to, to see the metadata about every request between these proxies and actually like do like a bit of like Wireshark style inspection of, of the, um, of the calls between the applications. Uh, and it includes a Prometheus and a Grafana component. Right, so Prometheus and Grafana are uh, like Prometheus is like a time series database that allows you to collect scrape data from the various proxies, and Grafana is like a visualization dashboard for for it. Uh, we're going to run a Linkerd viz check. And there's another question. Uh, if we're yeah, let's go. Yeah, uh, is there any performance impact on the apps due to the proxy container in the middle? Yeah, great question. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, great question. So yes, there is. Uh, whether or not it's a negative performance impact is going to depend on your application and the scale at which you're running, right? So we've got lots of examples. And if you look at KubeCon North America, some folks over at a company, I think it was Entain, 
uh, they're a, they're an Australian company. They do they do betting basically, or they run a betting platform. So what they found is because they were doing a lot of gRPC connections, uh, Linkerd adding Linkerd into their environment increased their performance and allowed them to get over a 10x increase in the number of requests they could handle <clears throat> by adding Linkerd. So the very short answer is adding proxy, adding any additional steps in your network path is going to slow down any given request, right? As you scale or as you do more and more traffic, the benefits of connection level load balancing or intelligent, intelligent endpoint selection can outweigh the cost of having those additional proxies in the space. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think it was actually a really good explanation. And, and I think there's also really great uh, Linkerd case studies in the CNCF case study area. I read a few of them. They're really amazing results. Oh, awesome. Yeah, there, there's a there's a ton out there. Let me know if you have any more questions. For all this, uh, I'll, I'll put up the link to the Linkerd Slack at the end. Feel free to hop in, ask us questions directly. You can find me right there all the time. So now that I've installed the Linkerd dashboard, what I'm going to do, you'll see there's this component, this tap injector, right? So that is that. Like Linkerd adds the proxy by adding in what we call a mutating webhook. And that what that does is it sees, you know, an object type and it changes it on the back end. So you don't you don't see it necessarily. But what we have is, oh, actually, no, I'm fine. What we have is when we inject emoji voto, it's gonna get the tap configuration as well as the the basic configuration in there to actually um, um to actually get things get things set up. So uh yeah, and there's yep, one, um, yep, someone yep, asking yep, for yep, yep. beginning level, I think, Kubernetes guidance. Uh, do you have any tips or? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the Linkerd docs uh, have this getting started guide, which which walks you through basically everything I'm doing today, right? Like in depth, uh, step by step, how you how you get this up and running. Uh, if you're totally new to Kubernetes and don't know how to send, stand up an individual environment, the thing I would recommend is try something like Docker Desktop or K3D, or depending on what you're on, so that you can get a local Kubernetes environment that you can get started with. And also the, the Kubernetes docs themselves have a link to a getting started guide that's pretty pretty good, although it's been a while since I've, since I've used it. But it was pretty good when last I checked. Um, we're just going to look at the pods in the Linkerd namespace. Cool. Um, can pop out a dashboard. Sure. Um, this isn't totally necessary yet. So I'm actually just going to skip that right now. Uh, we'll pop out a dashboard in a second. I just don't want to do it quite yet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add, uh, yeah, you can absolutely, you can install Linkerd on any Kubernetes distribution. So whether it's managed, whether it's your own version, it's fine. There's no, there's no networking or special Kubernetes API requirement, right? It just, it just works wherever you're going. So, and you can always test it. If you're not sure whether or not you can do the install, do that Linkerd check command. So Linkerd space check space dash dash pre, right? That'll tell you whether or not you have the right permissions and whether your Kubernetes environment is set up correctly to install Linkerd. Uh, so you can always test that before you, before you run anything. So here, what I want to do is I want to add, I want to go, go back to that diagram. Sorry to keep flipping around here. Uh, going back to that diagram, what I want to do is, oh, you're so welcome. Um, what I want to do now is add the proxies to these components, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to inject my environment. That's what we call it is injecting the, the proxy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the deployments in the emoji voto namespace. I'm going to output them as YAML and I'm going to send them over to the Linkerd CLI command. Linkerd CLI command is Linkerd inject. Right? And what that's going to do is, is look through the objects that you send it. It's going to see, hey, is this object a deployment set, a stateful set, or a replica set? And probably one more, daemon set. And if it is, it'll add a little annotation that says Linkerd inject true. And I can, I can show you that in a second. And then we're going to send it back to the Kubernetes API. And that will tell the Linkerd webhook to go ahead and change that deployment object and inject the proxy. So that's a lot of talking. So you can just see it. What you're going to see is when I hit Enter, these pods are all going to get restarted, and now there's going to be two containers instead of one. So let's go. Uh, so I'm, I want to just talk about a pod real quick, right? Kind of a funny name, right? Like, you know, this all came out from Docker. You know, we had the little whale. And so like a pod was like a pod of whales swimming together. So we've got our 
a pod is like a, a container basically, or like a little uh, namespace for containers, right? And so what we do, the way a service mesh works is it is it sits a second container beside your first one. Um, it, it sits the second container beside your first one. And, uh, and then that second container is the proxy that does whatever, whatever it's going to do. So we see the, the number of containers per pod changing when we inject emoji photo. So it goes from one container per pod to two containers per pod, right? Yeah. yeah. Sidecar. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Um, so now we have emoji photo injected. The other ones have cleaned up and gone away. Uh, yeah. Uh, so both. Fize, Faze, Fize, and Puffet have asked some questions about Envoy and Istio, which I'll hop into in like just a couple minutes, if that's okay. I think that sounds good. Everyone can can wait a few minutes, but we will get to it, guys. So no worries. We will we will get there. So uh, what I'm doing here, uh, and but don't hold me to it, right? I I will. I promise to to provide some answers. I just want to kind of show this injection process first. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to check that this proxy is ready. I can check it in a bunch of ways. Like I can just look over here and I know that it's ready because my pods are running. But let's go. Let's go ask Linkerd check. How's the health of the proxy in the emoji photo namespace? It's going to tell me, hey, this is how the overall thing's going. Also, you know, the data plane, the plane's looking correct. So great. Um, why, why did I do this? I don't need this. So let's let's now take a look at the dashboard. Let's see what we can see about our environment, right? So so what, because we've added Linkerd, right? Before all I could see is I had four containers, right? But I didn't really know very much. Like I don't know what it looks like as they're talking to each other or any any details. So let's let's fix that. I'm gonna type Linkerd viz dashboard, and I'm gonna pop up a dashboard, and we're gonna use it to to take a peek at our environment. So this is this is in that viz component. So when I installed that Linkerd viz, this is what I was this is what I was really installing, right? I now have a view of my cluster, all my namespaces. For each namespace, how many containers are are in the mesh, right? And then I can see what we call the golden metrics for each namespace. So that is what is the success rate? So of all the of all the calls, all the application to application calls, how many are returning successful response codes and how many aren't? What's the volume of requests? So what's the requests per second that are hitting it? Uh, what's the latency? Buy our latency bucket. And then if we want, we've got this handy dandy Grafana button where we can pop out a Grafana instance that's able to talk to our Prometheus and let us set up our own, our own dashboards or use the, the dashboards that are already built. Uh, to be clear, if you already have Prometheus, there are documentation and it's very well supported to instead of using the the in-memory Prometheus that comes with Linkerd viz to instead use your external Prometheus. So that's a, a very common scenario. Um, OK, so let's let's first take a look. We can sort all these namespaces by the success rate. So that is what percentage of the calls are actually successful. And the other thing we want to do is, or the other thing I want to do is, I want to I want to do that port forward command again, because I want to see, does my application still work the way it was working before? So I'm going to do a port forward. That's all that's happening there, just so you can see it. Um, and let's go check out. Let's go check out Emoji Vote. So if I refresh, Emoji Vote still works great, right? I can go click on my various apps. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. And I can vote on them. I can see the current leaderboard. So my, I didn't, I didn't create, I didn't create a new custom resource type to say, hey, this is. You know, this is the virtual gateway, so I can get my traffic over here, or virtual server, or anything like that, right? I'm just using standard Kubernetes primitives, and the my application still works as as designed, right? With the addition of I now have all these metrics about what's going on, I can go in like Emoji Vote is broken; it's deliberately broken. We can go see why it's broken and how, right? Uh, um. I'll answer that in a second. We can see why it's broken and how. We can see all sorts of details about like what is the you know what does the actual environment look like, right? Um, as we just have a bunch of data, and we also have now everything. All the all our traffic is MTLS, right? Uh, in in our cluster. So let me before I go any further, let's 
answer questions. Is that our, is that all right? Yeah, I think that sounds great. So we had the questions about Istio as well as the sidecar and Envoy, and then there's the um, cloud services one as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let me answer the one about Istio and Linkerd. So yeah. Istio and Linkerd are both service mesh projects, right? Linkerd is a CNCF service mesh. Istio is run by another foundation. I don't, I don't know what it is, uh, but like they, they have different design philosophies, right? Istio, Istio uses the Envoy proxy. So it, instead of building its own proxy, it uses an existing one called Envoy, which is a CNCF project and it's a great tool and it, it has tons of features and capabilities. Istio has a lot of features that you won't see in Linkerd, right? Like you'll hear people talking about running Wasm plugins or, you know, whatever, some, some other stuff that you can do because of Envoy that's in Istio. And so it's, it's, it's got a lot of features. Uh, but those features tend to come with a bit of a cost, right? So, you know, when uh, when we look at it, um, sorry, I'm I'm just going to finish this. Uh, so so it comes at a bit of a cost, right? So Istio can be a little bit complex to use, right? So with with Linkerd, we don't require you to use any sort of custom resources to work with Linkerd, right? We do everything in a Kubernetes native way using Kubernetes primitives, and and stick to it, right? With Istio, you need to you need to make your app work with Istio. So you need to write custom objects and custom YAML to support Istio. It also tends to be a little bit more complex if, from an operator perspective to use and run, especially when you get to scale. Uh, so that's that's our, our big delta. The other one is, you know, we've been releasing performance benchmarks lately now. So we're the folks that make Linkerd. So take take the benchmarks with a little bit of salt. But if you look at, uh, we, we got this benchmark suite from the folks over at Kinvoke who wrote basically a, a testing suite to decide like, what mesh performs better than another. And we we ran the tests last year or earlier last year and then recently just the other day with our 2.11 release. And we found that Linkerd performs really well com compared to Istio, especially in terms of resource consumption as well as the actual speed to send traffic along. Now, it's faster, but if you need, if you need the features that Istio has, you're not gonna find all of those features in Linkerd, period. Um, I hope that answers your question, Faze. And if it doesn't, let me know. I'm happy to happy to share more. Um, oh, thanks for the benchmarks. I'll I'll post them up. Um, the other one yeah. is we're not I using think... Envoy as a sidecar. So that's a that's a great point. So Linkerd Linkerd doesn't use Envoy, right? Linkerd the folks over at Linkerd decided to write a Rust based proxy for Linkerd. Right, so there's there's some advantages to Rust, right? That that we see, right? One of which is a lot of work on on modern networking is happening in Rust today, and by building on top of those Rust libraries, we're able to to take advantage of advances in in Rust networking to make our proxy more performant. The other one is Rust. Rust is like necessarily more memory safe than C plus plus, right? So it it allows us to avoid a lot of the memory management vulnerabilities that you see with a different language. So, so Linkerd proxy we think is, or we know is extremely small, is extremely fast and is extremely secure compared to other proxies. It is also much more limited in its scope of what it does. It is not a general purpose proxy. You can't use it. If you wanna set up an ingress with Linkerd proxy, good luck, right? Like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work, right? It only works with the Linkerd mesh because it only exists to support Linkerd. Right, there are folks. There are great projects like Emissary from the folks over at Ambassador, and and a ton of others. Right, that are amazing ingresses that are built on top of Envoy, and you know, there it's a it's a great tool for that use case. We think it's too much for what we're trying to build with Linkerd. I hope that answered your question, Puffet, and let me let me know if that if I missed anything. Um. One more Vashit asked the difference between AWS, Azure, or Kubernetes. It it's it's actually way too long a topic to get into now. Um, Kubernetes is like a it's just a container scheduling tool that can run on top of whatever infrastructure you choose to build it on, uh, whether that's bare metal VMs or um, bare metal VM. Yeah, bare metal or VMs. That's all I can think of right now. Um, and it works in in whatever cloud you wanna you wanna work it in. Um, what type of communication happens between the control plane and the proxies? No, it's not, it's not very heavy. So Srini, I think, <clears throat> um, so Srini, the, 
it's it's just command and control traffic. So the big thing is the proxies, like the proxies have to ask the control plane, what are the available endpoints for any given service so that they can do that intelligent load balancing that you get with Linkerd. And we call it EWMA. It's a long story. It's exponentially weighted moving average. It's basically just a really good way to pick who's the fastest pod to respond to a given request. And you can, you can read more about that in our docs. Let me know, Trini, if that was an OK answer. Um, so with that, I'd love to pop back into this dashboard and just explore what's broken in Emojivoto. Does that work? Sounds really good. Did I All right. Did, we, did you answer soft pollution already? Say again? Soft pollution about the... Uh, no, I didn't. Thank yeah. you so much. I totally missed that. Yeah. Um, do I inject Linkerd on all pods somehow related to my my application? What if I want to have database within the cluster too? Uh, yeah. Oh, so wonderful question. So you inject inject Linkerd where you want the benefits of the mesh, right? And the benefits are essentially security, observability, and reliability, right? So we'll do better load balancing than you'll see in Kubernetes. We'll give you uh, metrics and statistics about your environment that you won't see otherwise, and we'll give you MTLS, right? So if you need that, you in, you inject it. You can absolutely run databases and connect them and mesh them in Linkerd, right? The thing you have to do is be aware of whether the traffic is HTTP or gRPC, or if it's some other uh, some other TCP protocol, right? And depending on the type of traffic. You, you may want to tell Linkerd to treat that connection as just a, as a generic TCP trunk, right? Um, yeah, as a generic TCP trunk. And there's a lot more on that in our docs. And uh, I'll like I said, I'll post the Linkerd Slack. I'd love to get into it in a bit more depth with you if, if you want to hear it. But no reason not to inject databases. And we do it all the time. Like we run Cortex for our production applications. And we have Cortex fully injected with Linkerd. And it behaves great. Um, Okay, well, let me let me finish this demo and then I'll I'll answer more questions. Does that work? Sounds good. All right. So here we have our emoji photo app, right? That we were we were talking about earlier, and it's broken. So right, we see our success rate is below one hundred percent, and it shouldn't be, right? There's no reason it ought to be broken. So let's go take a look. So I click on the emoji photo namespace. I start with this little graph. Tells me, you know, what's the communication look like in this app? So instead of just, you know, a bunch of pods, right? I instead see a little, a little service map that tells me who's talking to who, right? Now I can see on a per deployment basis, what is the success rate? What is the latency? What is the volume of requests? All that stuff, right? And I can see that voting in the web service both have sub 100% success rates. So looking at it, right? My problem is somewhere between web and voting, right? It's not vote bot and web. It's not web and emoji. It's web and voting. All right, cool. So let's click on web and let's see what's going on. So with web, you know, I can see who's talking to web. So I've got Prometheus and VoteBot talking to the web service. And who is web talking to? Well, it's talking to voting and emoji. And here's our success rate requests, all that stuff. But beyond that, because I've got tap in the, in the flow, I can actually see the live API calls that are being exercised in this environment, right? So let's just filter all the calls that are going on by their success rate. So I can see that um, from VoteBot, to the web service at API vote, I'm only seeing a 90% success rate. And I can see um, to the emoji service, right, all the various calls that are going on. Now I'm, I'm actually missing something, so it hasn't popped up yet. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give this a refresh, see if I can get my my appropriate error here. Yeah, here we go. So from the voting, or sorry, to the voting service. So from web to voting, when I post to this path, right, on the API call, I get a 0% success rate. So we can we can go now dive into voting and see what's going on. Does this make sense so far for the folks that are watching? Well, I, I hope so. I would I'd love to hear something in the chat if, if, if it is useful. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you. No worries. Now we're getting answers. Yes, everyone is very Thank watching. you so much, folks. I really appreciate it. So now we're in voting, right? And we can see from voting's perspective, it's talking to two services or three services, because TAP's also in there. <laughs> and thank you, everyone who responded. I really appreciate it. Uh, so we got the web service talking to voting. And we can look. Now, again, let's go to the let's go to the live calls that are coming in. Let's sort them by their success rate, right? Um, 
and I'm, you know, I'm at the will of whatever actual requests come through. So I've got a traffic generator that's sending me some messages. So I can actually probably vote on the donut. Oh no, it didn't, it didn't work. Let me try this again. Let's see if I can't make Linkerd pick it up. Um, there we go. Come on, buddy. Oh, there we go. Um, so I can see that from the web web deployment to this vote donut, I have some failure, right? And of course, we can see that by going in the UI. If we try and vote on donut, in spite of it being it being like by far the best emoji in our list, it's it's not getting the it's not getting the recognition it deserves on the leaderboard, right? And that's because when we make the call from web to vote for donut, right? We get we get an error. We can dive in a little bit deeper. Actually, so do a tap. Like, so I want to do like the the live tap on this traffic, right? And let's start it, right? And again, I'm talking, to, looking at the voting service. Have I started? Yeah, I've started. So we just have to wait for something to call it. What is your problem? There we go. So we see some we see some requests coming in. All right, let's stop now. Actually, we see some requests coming in, and what we see is when you vote, like for the checkered flag or for the woman shrugging or clap, right? We get a we get an HTTP status code of two hundred and a gRPC status of OK. When we vote for donut, however, because <laughs> this is a gRPC call, we get an HTTP status of two hundred. So like the 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 HTTP call works great, but we have a gRPC error of unknown. So it's not un it's not that it doesn't know what's going on. This is literally a gRPC error code of unknown uh, being raised. And so we see the gRPC error code right here. So, so we've got everything we need to be like, hey, folks that make the voting service, voting service team, please go fix uh, vote donut because it's clearly having a problem, right? Now, this is a bit of a contrived, uh, a contrived example, but you get, the, you get the gist of it, right? It's there to give you an easy way to just hop in you know, look at what your environment is and and like, let's just get, let's get to the root of our problem as quickly as we can, right? And this whole time, right, we've gotten things like gRPC load balancing. We have all our connections upgraded to HTTP2. We have MTLS everywhere. You know, if we want, we can turn on policy so we can restrict what service is allowed to talk to what service, right? So there's a lot of power there, but there's no, there's no required complexity, right? If I look at Linkerd, right? So let's go back to that, to that Istio comparison, right? If I do kget crd, right, um, and let's just grab for Linkerd, grab Linkerd, I've got I've got three custom resource definitions, right, on in this in this environment. There's actually four because there's another which is the traffic split SMI. Um, so there's four custom resource definitions in Linkerd, none of which are required to use Linkerd, right? Like none of this is critical path to make the thing work, right? Um, yeah, then there's another question about comparing between Gateway, Kong, GraphQL, or Service Mesh. So, for example, Linkerd. Yeah, so this is a great, a really great question. Let me go back to my diagram here. Um, and then it's more questions coming in. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's missing from this picture, right? Uh, what's missing from this picture is a way to do what we call north-south traffic, or traffic from outside the cluster to inside the cluster. Right, uh, so so there's nothing there, right? So there's no built-in ingress or gateway in Linkerd to bring traffic from outside the cluster in, except for when you're talking multi-cluster, which is a, a much different story. Uh, so Linkerd doesn't add an or doesn't include an ingress. So if you use Kong, if you use Nginx, if you use Ambassador, you know what it, whatever it may be, right? You just you basically just add the um, you just add that ingress into the mesh. And then you get all the benefits of Linkerd plus whatever that that ingress gives you natively. Um, does Viz integrate with Kubernetes RBAC? Um, yeah, will it be able to see its own name? So Viz is a really it's a really very simplistic UI, right? And it's it's not like there's no there's no uh, there's no user login, right? Like there's no login logout. There's no user. There's nothing like that. Right. If you're looking for role-based access control for a Linkerd dashboard, that's where we have products like Buoyant Cloud, which is a commercial product, which is free to use, right, for anybody for up to two clusters. 
but it's got it's got RBAC rules and stuff. But the open source Linkerd Viz dashboard doesn't have doesn't have any sort of role thing. There's there's some cool stuff you can do. Like so, if you're using the Ambassador Edge stack, you can set up. You know, you can you can decide on an account by account basis who's allowed to access the dashboard and who isn't. But it's it's all or nothing once you're in the dashboard, right? The the positive thing is this dashboard doesn't give you access. Like even even when I do that tap. It doesn't give you access to the um, doesn't give you access to any of the actual traffic, right? It just gives you access to the metadata about the traffic. So when I start this, right, I don't actually see I don't actually see any packets. I don't see any data, right? And it's also read only. So there's not like it's not a ton of need to expand it, right? Um, there's not a ton of need to add a ton of authentication in here. Like I I leave a version of this Linkerd dashboard exposed to the internet all the time because it's my job to talk about Linkerd. And I've never had I've never had any incident related to it. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question, Falma. I think. Um, and I'd, I'd love to hear from you if that if that was useful. Um, Puff Puffit is asking. Yeah, uh, his name oh, is Bruno, so we can use Bruno as well for Puffit. <laughs> Say again. Um, Puffit informed us that his name is actually Bruno as well. So oh, we can use that one as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the, the right. Oh, geez, great, great question, both of you. So no, again, the Linkerd dashboard is is it's all or nothing, right? Um, and it doesn't even it doesn't even come with even basic auth enabled, right? It's just can you can you get to it or can you not, right? That's the that's the answer. Oh, sorry, Bruno. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just saw that got got the names now. Um, were there any other questions, or have I have I answered everybody so far? Um, yeah, I think those were the two new ones. But if there's anything more, please, everyone, ask away. Yeah, that's that's the bulk of what I was going to show you. You know, like the the exciting things lately, right? We just published another set of benchmarks based on that that Kinvoke testing suite, right? Not something that that we wrote. You know, where where we had great performance against against Istio, but again, that comes at comes at a trade off, right? If there are, if there are features in Istio that you love and need, you're not going to get. Um, Oh, right, Srini. I, I did see that question and I, and I ignored it. I'm so sorry. Um, so Srini asked, does this support communication with services running outside of Kubernetes? Um, so it depends what you mean. Like, yes, obviously, you can talk with things outside Kubernetes into Kubernetes, but you're doing it through whatever your standard ingress path is. You don't have, you don't have, like, you don't have the the mesh, the the service mesh. These proxies, sorry. Here we go. These proxies, right now, we have no ability for you to for you to deploy them and extend the mesh beyond the cluster. Right. The mesh is is a inside Kubernetes situation only. Right. You can do multi cluster, but again, it's only in Kubernetes. That being said, uh, tune back in uh, in the back half or uh, middle of next year because we are looking at you know. Is it reasonable to use Linkerd for situations beyond Kubernetes? So that that may be something that we do in the future. And I, I would really love really love to hear from you about your about your use case because I think um, I think it'd be cool to get an understanding of what folks are doing. Speaking of which, here's our here's our Slack. So Slack.linkerd.io, right? I can't I can't actually post anything in the chat here, but if you check out and I'll here hold on I'll put it in the private chat. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you want to share anything, you can send it to us and then yeah. Got it. Um, so slack.linkerd.io will allow you to join join the Linkerd Slack and you can just reach out, ask me questions. I'd love to um Falma, the Istio folks are also extremely cool. Uh, <laughs> or at least as cool as we are, because you know, we're all working in tech. So yeah, you, you gotta keep that keep that in line. Um Fem, Femi asks, or maybe Yusuf, uh, will this Linkerd version work with any release of Kubernetes? No, no, there is a limit to how far back, uh, how far back any given release goes. If you want to check, just run, uh, just run that Linkerd. Sorry, uh, Control L. Oof, I've got a lot going on here. <laughs> sorry. Oh, uh, CD. Here we go. Uh, let me make this way smaller. If you ever want to check if Linkerd will work, if the Linkerd version you have will work. Linkerd check dash dash pre. This will test whether or not you can install it in the cluster. If I run it now, it will fail.
because I can't install Linkerd because Linkerd is already installed. But on a on a blank cluster, it will tell you. Um, uh, Raphael uh, asks, can we see traffic to MQs like Kafka and Rabbit? Uh, yes, yes, kind of, right? So great, great question. Um, this like this level of detail that you see here, right? Where we can go into an individual, like let's go pop into let's pop into web, right? You know, the way we can see the individual API calls and understand that traffic, that exists because the Linkerd proxies actually it's aware of HTTP and gRPC calls. And we're able to we're able to show you this this level of depth. For something like Kafka or RabbitMQ, when you when you add it to the mesh, what you have is just a point-to-point -point TCP connection that will encrypt and will give you some TCP statistics, but we don't know, you know, we don't know like the we don't know we don't have any application aware data for it, right? It's just it's just a generic layer four trunk. Uh, so it's it's kind of limited. That being said, if you do have a big use case where you're looking for an inspection of the Kafka traffic, that is something that we've been looking at building into Linkerd. And your feedback, like listen, user feedback and real world scenarios is what is what drives what Linkerd is and does, right? So we we depend on we depend on y'all out there to tell us what to put in Linkerd. And a great place to make feature requests is over on Slack, also GitHub, right? You can find Linkerd on GitHub. This Linkerd, uh, where is it? Yeah, Linkerd slash Linkerd two. This is where you can you can raise issues. Also, if you have something that you're looking for in terms of features, well, Slack tends to be a really good place to put that in as well. Um, yeah, Srini, I, uh, happy to, happy to chat more about your scenario, honestly, um, would be, would be great to, great to hear about what you're doing. Um, Raphael, same thing, man, would, or would, would love to love to hear your perspective and, um, and talk to you. If y'all can join the Slack, it would be fantastic to meet with you. I'm just at Jason and I'll, I'll look at who joins the Slack after this and, and come say hi to all y'all individually. Um, so Puffet, oh, sorry, that was Bruno, I believe, uh, says, you mentioned that pods are already doing MTLS. Uh, is this the default one injecting the sidecar? Yeah. So it is possible. It is possible to turn off MTLS and Linkerd, but it's not simple or straightforward, right? And in general, it is the default. You just get MTLS everywhere. I, I don't know that it's not simple, but I don't know how to do it because I've never, I've never tried. Uh, and I'm not... A, I'd love to hear if you are trying to turn it off. I'd love to hear why and what the use case is, because I I think what you'll find is is there's no reason, there's no performance reason to disable MTLS when you're doing when you're doing Linkerd, right? The the better thing to do if you have like a given connection that you don't want, you know, hand, like being meshed, you can you can tell the proxy not to not to look at or ignore all traffic on a given port. Right, which is a, a viable way to do that that thing should you need to. But it, in general, it's better to keep MTLS on and just skip individual ports as required. Perfect. All right, how are we doing on time? We have a few minutes left, so if you have awesome. any, any final things, any audience questions, we'll still have a few minutes of time. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd love to dive in if y'all have any any particular questions. Um, some people, okay, so Bruno says some people are allergic to TLS inside a Kate's cluster. Uh, you can certainly specify custom certificates. So, um, so the the Linkerd, the way Linkerd works when it gets installed, this is actually another good one to put on here, right? The way Linkerd works is there's actually uh, you've heard of like three-tiered architecture for certificate authority. The way it works is, is basically you build, in general, when you're looking at certificates, you build like a root certificate that is establishes the trust in a given like domain, right? And that root certificate, you kind of keep really private uh, and, and keep it offline. Then you'll do uh, what's generally referred to as an intermediate certificate. So any like one, any one use case, in our case, any one Kubernetes cluster gets an intermediate certificate that is signed by the root that everybody trusts, right? Um, and that intermediary certificate goes to the control plane. So the control plane holds on an intermediary and it uses it, both the public and private key, to create and sign uh, individual proxy certificates. So every proxy gets an individual certificate um, 
that is generated by the control plane. But that that root and that intermediary can both be generated by you. And honestly, for production environments, we almost always recommend that folks generate their own certificates and use it. And then every cluster should use its own intermediary, all signed by the same root. Because if you're signed by the same root, then you can the then you can link clusters together, right? Using Linkerd multi-cluster. You can you can connect clusters, but you can allow each cluster to be its own security boundary. So if you decide that like one cluster is compromised for whatever reason, you can revoke the intermediary of that certificate or of that cluster, and all of a sudden it can't talk to the rest of the mesh, right? But each and every other cluster is still is still set up. I hope that I hope that answers your your question, Bruno. Um, Tanny, is the thing that issues the client certificates pluggable? Oh, uh, yeah, it is not, right? So great, great question, Tanny or Tanny, Tanny. I'm I'm sorry if I said your name incorrectly. Um, it uh, the 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 identity service generates those certificates. That being said, the source of those certificates is pluggable, right? So you can bring whatever whatever CA architecture you want. Um, you know, folks, if you want to use like Cert Manager as an example to generate certs out of Vault or out of like some AWS certificate issuer, I'm not that great at AWS, honestly. So I don't know what they have in terms of options for generating generating intermediary certificates. But you can use Cert Manager to generate certificates from whatever authority you choose. Uh, Srini, maybe? I'm sorry, I'm not, not sure how to say your name. Asks uh, if we can suggest any resources for a deep dive into Linkerd. You know, the, the docs are really good. I'll, I'll be honest, like the, the docs are great. And and start using it. Like the nice thing about Linkerd is you don't have to go super deep, right? Like go check out the Getting Started Guide to get get a sense and then go through go through the tasks, right? This when I, I, I only joined Buoyant in February, right? And the first thing I did is I just started going through these various tasks and they were great, right? Because I, I was like, okay, how do I bring my own Prometheus? How do I do, you know, how do I set up retries or timeouts? You know, um, this one, debugging HTTP applications with per route metrics, that was awesome, right? Really good, shows you how to use some of the custom resources that do come in Linkerd to, to get better statistics or better, better insight into what you're doing. And then with all this, uh, check out Buoyant, um, Buoyant.cloud. If you actually want to try, like the, it's a hosted product, right? There's a there's a paid subscription. There's a free subscription that's good for up to two clusters and fifty workloads. Uh, it's a good tool. It makes it easier to see some of the stuff that's going on in Linkerd, and it gives you gives you alerts if you've done any kind of misconfiguration, so you'll know that right away. But yeah, I would I would check out initially check out the tasks. It's it's how I learned learned it and got a little bit deeper, and I found it really valuable. Um. And the other one is is pop into the Slack because it's a great place to just ask questions and talk to folks about it. Um, and uh, to can use of yeah as as the Cloud Native Foundation already said, they all of the sessions from Cloud Native Live you can view them afterwards as recorded. So no worries, you can play back all of the details you want. Yeah, yeah I think we have we have what we have four minutes left officially. So if there's any quick final questions, we do have some time. Um, and usually when I say this, the longest questions always pop in immediately at that point, <laughs> but not too much time. But do you have, um, Jason, any final words, wrap up anything? Yeah, the other thing I'd say is if you're if you're looking to try it out, a good one once you've done that getting started guide, which you should 100% do. And did we post that in the chat? If not, um, let me grab you that no, link. No, we did not. Hold on. Yeah, just post it to the chat and, and we will get it shared. To the yeah, so the Getting Started Guide is a great place to go. After that, check out that check out this multi-cluster. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun one, right? Because this will require you to do the install, but but customize it, right? You can't use you can't use that Linkerd install command as is with no commands, because when you're doing multi-cluster, you have to create and specify a specific certificate authority, right? Uh, for for each cluster, right? So generate two different intermediary certificates and connect them. You know, I've got I've got a talk that I did for the the Sevo folks where I connected a cluster. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, I mean it's buoyant. Hold on, let me take you over to buoyant. Buoyant.io. There we go. Uh, buoyant, as in it floats. Um, and here I'll post that link. Uh, 
So yeah, it, it's point. We're the folks that make Linkerd. That's kind of our, our claim to fame. If you're using Linkerd and you're in production, love to hear from you. At a minimum, if you add yourself to the adopters thing, so if you go to the Linkerd repo, if you're using it in production, add yourself to adopters. We will we will talk to you and send you some Linkerd swags so if you want uh, a very cool Linkerd hat or some Linkerd shirts and stickers. Add yourselves to adopters and uh, and love to hear from you. Um, and also come in, feel free to just pop in on Slack and happy to happy to talk to you. You'd love to get you love to get you into production with Linkerd if you're not there and um, you know love to answer your questions if you're concerned about stuff around Service Mesh. Perfect. Perfect call to action to, to finish off of this and no new questions there. But I think uh, everyone will now rush over to the Slack side to ask their all of your questions later there. But yeah, it's been absolutely wonderful hour here with everyone. So many questions, so much interaction. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you everyone for joining in obviously today with the latest episode of Cloud Native Live. It was really great to have Jason Morgan talking about Linkerd today. Um, and as, as mentioned before, always uh, really love the interaction. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for your questions. It was a lot, but it was, I think it was the best way to spend this hour. Um, next week, we will have a session about multi-architectural Kubernetes clusters. So tune in at the same time next week. Um, looking forward to seeing you there. And thank you for joining us today and see you next week. Thank you so much.